All right, we're back for today to work on this tranny. Trying to figure out what I'm going to do here. So I thought about it last night quite a bit. On this noise. Like that chatter noise. So I think it's in the rollers. So I'm going to take the gear out. I'm going to sand on a little bit, put it back in and see if the noise dissipates all the way or somewhat. And then I'll take this whole thing apart, pull the seal out, hone the race a little bit, put oversized bearings in it and hope that that problem will go away. If that fixed the problem, then i got to take this apart, clean all the junk out here I put in here, all the grease, and sand the inside of the bearing surface on the gear. For the same reason. I got a brand new shaft, so I know that's good, but Dad has the same problems with this stuff had. I was hoping to find another gear to use to put in here and check with, but all I can find is this Andrews gear. And it's for a late transmission, not an early one, so it's different. But I will show you the difference on how it's made. Alright, for now we get this thing apart. And see if we can figure out what's going on today. Don't get your fingers near any of the important parts over there. They're spinning at higher RPM. Good way to lose fingers. <clears throat> okay, so I got that all out now. I'm gonna go clean this up and I'll be back. All right, we're back. Got all the grease cleaned off. So these are the marks here we're worried about. All this washboard right here. Hear my fingernail catching on it? Pretty deep right here. All of these I can feel, so they're catching on them. So I think that's the noise I'm getting. All right, so here's the brand new Andrews gear over here. There's the part number if you care. <coughs> this is for the later tranny which has the uh, torrent and needle bearings in there instead of loose rollers so the gears are made differently so you can see how they're made a little differently whenever you see this big solid wide spot here that's a late gear and it's cut away like that it's an early gear quick way of telling they are different size so you don't interchange but if you notice there's an o-ring right here and that's what seals your sleeve when you put it on there so it's cut deep for that to go in there. This one here has a groove right here, here, but this is an undercut. It's not an O-ring groove. So when you put your seal spacer down on top of that, that's what seals it so it doesn't get a, go away. Can't get this out of here to tell, but it goes in there pretty deep. Anyway, that's the groove. So you're not cutting the sleeve down to put the O-ring. You're cutting the gear down for the O-ring. So the sleeve slips right over still at full strength. It doesn't collapse when you tighten your nut down. If you cut the o-ring groove into your spacer, then it will collapse when you torque on it and it gets loose. So it doesn't work. So anyway, Andrew's the only one that makes those like that that I know of. Jim's probably has their variation that they're doing something on. Or not Jim, excuse me, uh, Baker. And their fancy trainer they got. So <clears throat> Jim's coffee's hardly. No change. Okay, so I'm gonna go try sanding on this and see if we can make a difference. So I'm going to go over here to our lathe, play with it a little bit. So we're going to chuck it up in here so we got something to work to. Uh, go over here we can see better. Since you don't have enough 
far enough without having to change the jaw out. Be close though. Crap in my jaws here, so I don't want to open up. Yeah, it's fighting it. You got six jaws, you got six jaws to get full of crap. How much more they're gonna come out anyway. Okay. Let's see how close we get with six of these on here. Hopefully get some of these that actually hold on to something around. Six drops. You only need three to hold it. So, but they can't all be on one side. You have to have one over here and two over there at least. So, all right. So now I'm gonna find some sandpaper to use. So I pulled out my sandpaper I use for sanding stuff. <clears throat> Did a bunch of knucklehead oil pumps on this earlier. So this is a good piece to use. Already broken in. This is a piece of sandpaper. This is emery paper. Actually, it's just a sandpaper too, just fancy sandpaper, pro-grade junk. So this is all broken in, which is nice. What grid is this thing? This is unknown grit. Looks like it says 100. That's not 100. Must be 180. So that's a good piece. This is really coarse. Probably 80, 60, yep. This is emery paper here. Emery paper's cloth. That's 100 grit. That's this nice one here. This is pretty torn up. 220, that's a good one. This is 220. This one's 120. Even though it feels like 220, it's 120. This is actually 220. And this is 220 here, which is fresher. And this one, we're not sure what it was. I'm thinking it's 180. All right, so I'm thinking a piece of this here is what we're going to use. I just need a little sliver of it. <clears throat> 220 grit. Pro grade, so it's nice and fine. It means all the particles are really close. There's no thick ones thrown in there to screw everything all up. So we're just going to take a piece of that, tear it off, and use it. We need a nice table to tear again. Oh, there's one right over here. Nice sharp edge. I don't need about that much. There you go. One piece of custom sandpaper. The trick is to be quick with that tear so it does exactly what you want it to do. Okay, now we're going to take a file like this. You put the sandpaper on the file and then you can run this up and over this and it'll give you a fairly flat and smooth surface. It's still going to cut everything, which I don't want to do, only to cut the high spots. If I had a hone on there, it'd only cut the high spots basically, but this will cut everything a little bit. It will cut the high spots a little bit more though. Now it doesn't work when you got the sandpaper against the file. It needs to be against the part to actually work. So got it flush on this side so it doesn't tear up too much. We got about a 30 thou overhang. Keep your arm out of that. Push flat with the file. Looks 
like it's filing harder on the outside, or sanding on the outside more, so I'm going to push more on the inside. Try to get a better, even job. That looks more even. You can see how the paper's got a nice even sand mark across it. So that's what we're after. So you can see how it's nice and fairly even looking as it goes around. And I'm not seeing those high spots on there anymore. Which is good. I'm sure the low spots are still there though. Right there you can see a low spot. It's right above my fingernail there if you can see it. So. All right, so we're going to do that. We're going to clean this back up. I'm going to put back a training and see if the uh, noise is going away.